Hey guys, welcome back to another Planet Mithril Paints tutorial. Today we'll be taking a trip to Dunlin to explore these ruthless, fierce warriors who were driven from their lands by the Horse Lords of Rohan, and also exploring some of the rich vibrancy of their colour palette. Without further delay, please sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. We're going to start by base coating all the exposed skin with Bugman's Glow. You can carefully pick out the cheeks within the helm here so his face doesn't end up being all beard and moustache. Now, layer over all the skin with a mix of Bugman's Glow and Cadian Flesh Tone. This gives us more of a natural skin hue to work off for the ensuing layering and highlighting stages. Once the wash is dry, relayer with the previous Bugman's Cadian mix. Now be careful here to leave the right and flesh shade showing in the deepest recesses of the forearms as well as between the fingers to create natural depth and shadow. Highlight now with pure Cadian Flesh Tone. Focus on the upper areas of skin here and defining more of the pronounced musculature over the forearms to really give the impression of this being a strong, vicious warrior of Dunland. If you happen to get stuck, let the natural flow of the sculpted muscle be your guideline as to where you should apply this defining highlight. You also want to focus here on defining some of the tendons across the backs of the hands. Finally, apply a fine edge highlight with a mix of Cadian Flesh Tone and Pallid Witch Flesh. Keep your highlights tight and fine here to define the uppermost areas of skin, as well as defining the cheeks and the knuckle and finger joints with a quick targeted dot highlight. This overall effect will give us a nice, natural defined flesh tone. You can paint the warriors of Dunlin's hair in a variety of ways. Now we've explored browns and blondes before, so here we're going to show you how to paint grey hair to give this Dunlin thing warrior more of a grizzled look. Base the hair, beard and moustache with Mechanica Standard Grey. Layer over the hair with a mix of Mechanica Standard Grey and Dawnstone. Once the wash is dry, re-layer over with the previous mix and start separating out individual hairs, leaving the null oil showing in the deepest recesses. Take your time and make sure you have a good point on your brush here as any overspills will lessen the finished effect. Now 
Next, apply a fine highlight with pure Dawnstone. Start to push these highlights towards the outer curls of the hair and the edges of the beard to give the impression of light hitting the Dunlending's face. Finally, apply a pinpoint dot highlight with a mix of Dawnstone and Administratum Grey to the outer and most pronounced curls of the hair and the very edges of the beard and moustache. Paint the scale mail, accent blade, helmet interior and any buckles across the warrior with lead belcher. Once the wash is dry, apply a dot highlight across each individual scale with a mix of lead belcher and pallid witch flesh. This is time consuming, but the finished armour really benefits from the time spent defining the individual scales here. After this, apply the same mix across the very edges of the axe blade and helmet interiors to accentuate both sharpness and light. Base coat the medallions, helmet trim, dagger hilt and shield inner using Rune Lord Brass. Once the wash is dry, edge highlight all these areas with Sycorax Bronze. There are a few fur trims across the model, notably along his shoulder blades and atop each boot. We want to differentiate these from the gold on the model to give a slight contrast and make sure they don't blend in too much together and end up looking too blocky on the table stock. Start the furs by painting them with Steel Legion Draft.
Once the wash is dry, carefully pick out the furs as we did with the grey hair with a mix of steel legion drab and padded witch flesh. We shaded these parts earlier than normal to tone down the underlying areas of fur and give them some real depth to make them stand out. Finally, apply a very light targeted dry brush to the furs with Tyrant Skull. This helps just to accentuate the very highest points naturally and quickly, whilst also giving a sense of flowing material as he charges forth into battle. Now for the main, striking feature for Dundon Warriors, the vibrant cloaks. We're going to be aiming for a very bright, rich coloured cloak to best capture the essence of Dumbledore. To start, base coat both the cloak and the outer shield with a mix of corn red and rhinox hide. The rhinox hide here will just help to add a natural depth to the overall hue whilst also maintaining the vibrancy we're striving to achieve. Now to bring up the hue and richness for what we want to achieve, we're going to be adding Wazdaka Red to the mix, bringing the overall mixture to an approximate split of 50% Corn Red Rhinox Hide and 50% Wazdaka. Layer this over the whole cloak and shield. You may have to apply this in a few thinner coats in order to get a smooth finish, particularly across the shield outer. Once the wash is dried, relayer the previous mix over the cloak and the shield. Now make sure to leave the Agrax earth shade showing in the deepest recesses to give the cloak a natural flow. With the shield, start drawing the paint out from the centre, leaving the shade of the darker hue showing right up against the gold decoration in the centre. Now we're going to push the vibrancy and richness even more by adding the Evil Sun Scarlet to the overall mix. This will bring the mixture to an approximate 50-50 split Evil Sun Scarlet and the original base mix. Focus now on defining the upper and outer folds of the cloak, drawing your paint in smooth lines over the flow of the material and defining the outer and inner areas of the shield front.
Finally, at approximately 30%, about a third of Fire Dragon Bright to the mix for the extreme edge highlight. Now you want to focus on the upper and outermost folds of the cloak where the light will be hitting most prominently, as well as tracing an extremely fine line around the rim of the shield. Base coat the axe shaft, reverse of the shield, boots and belts with dry bark. With a mix of Gawthor Brown and Dryad Bark, carefully segment out the panelling on the reverse of the shield. Now, with Gawthor Brown, carefully edge highlight the belts and boots. Draw your paint in random streaks across the axe shaft and the shield reverse to give a nice wood grain effect. Paint the trousers and dagger sheath with a mix of Skaven Black Dinge and Abaddon Black. Once the wash is dry, relayer the previous mix leaving the non oil showing in the recesses. Finally, apply a fine edge highlight over these areas with pure scape and black dinge. We want a slightly different tone for the arm and leg bindings to contrast to that of the fur trims. 
To start, base coat these with more gas brown. Once the wash is dry, carefully layer more gas brown over the bindings again, leaving the Agrax Earth shade showing in the gaps between each strip of material. Finally, apply an edge highlight with a mix of more gas bone and pallid witch flesh. There we have it, the ruthless Dunland warrior ready to march to battle to reclaim their lands from the Kingdom of Rohan.